Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to On the Mic with Mike. It's the premier business radio program around. I'm your host, Mike King. I appreciate you being here with me. The views expressed here are mine. I have no connection to support of or agreement with any other host information or ads on the station. I don't work for the station. My program just airs here on a daily basis. Join me as this cutting edge show. We uplift the community and showcase RVA in a different way. The sounds you're listening to today are coming to you from the Common House, which is the premier social enterprise, social club, co-working space here on West Broad Street at Spirit 3 West Broad in downtown Richmond. Uh, they are the home to us on Wednesday, on Thursdays when we broadcast, coming to you on Friday, ESPN Richmond 106.1. The Mike King Biz Radio Network is also on The Choice, which is 105.3, every day from 2 to 3. Today, we got an outstanding, we got an outstanding uh, group of ta- talent here. So we got a communications expert and we got a young DJ entrepreneur, uh, one of Virginia Union's finest. Uh, so we have Julia Davis is here with us and Mr. Stephen Liscom. Hold on one second. I'm going to introduce, let them introduce themselves. Uh, Ms. Davis, we have to talk up now. We, you know, we don't have a, a big budget here. Okay. Well, no problem. I've never had a problem talking loud. Uh, good, good, good. Hello to everyone and, and uh, to your listening audience. I am um, a native of the DC area, a graduate of North Carolina A&T State University. Shout Dr. out to- You got me, Dr. Danny. She's another one she of you is, guys. She is, <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, shout out to all HBCUs. Um, my background is uh, 20 plus years in um, public relations and communications. Um, I've had the opportunity to do that both on the for-profit side as well as the nonprofit side. And most specifically, I guess in this season of my life, I'm really interested in reaching out to organizations and helping them tell their story. I just believe that we are inundated with bad news and stories that really make our hearts sad. So if you will, my assignment, I believe, is to spread the good news. So I'm also a pastor, um, but, but uh, I believe that good news is really important and it has an impact on our day-to-day lives. So I look forward to opportunities to share the good news. All righty, so when you said you were a pastor, um, I, said, I come from a long line of preachers. <laughs> Here, well, we Here we go. Here we go. Long line of preachers. So my sister's one, she's a Baptist preacher. My cousins are holiness preachers. So when we turn over the microphone to a preacher, we always have to be cautious because you might not get the microphone you back. Might, you might not get it. You might not because you got a word to tell. You got, you got a word <laughs> to tell and you got a platform and you're going to use it. I'm typically more diplomatic uh, than that. But, but I do believe that it is uh, an opportunity. And of course, you know, it, it is innate that preachers are always drawn to opportunities, but I think I'm probably more diplomatic with with that than than most. Well, that's good. So you're here co-hosting today. It's a big show today. We have uh, Steve, who's here with us. We also have recording artist Rufus Johnson is here. This is a Swagger Studio series. That's where we are sponsored by Jimmy Comer and the good folks over at RBI Services. Stephen, welcome to the program, sir. All right, thank you very much. Okay, so let tell us your story. I see you out there. When people don't think that brands work, they work. That's how I found you. What I found you, what you were doing is interesting. Let people know who you are, what you do, and then we're going to talk a little bit about the side thing that you're making into the the total thing. Okay. So to start off, it's not as long as my counterpart, resume (laughs) over here. We we all didn't start the same day. Yeah, we did. You know, you you got history. Letting it be known. Letting it be known. Okay. Okay, So it'll be a little short. But yes, I'm, my name is Stephen Lipscomb. I go by the name of DJ Duke. I am a graduate of Virginia Union University. When she mentioned North Carolina a t reminding of my sister, because she's a graduate of North Carolina a t as well. Okay, I got to give a shout out. All these other ages, I got to give a shout out <laughs> to the main one right here. Shout out to all the folks from Lincoln University that okay. we said, you know, we were the ones who opened the door. I'm just saying. So for all you proud HBCU grads out there, you can send your thanks our way. With you, we're all in the family, but please yeah. just put some respect on our name. <laughs> right. Sometimes people kind of leave, leave us out there. No. All right. So a t that's where you went. Virginia Union. Right. Yes, there you go. Okay, so you're over at Union. What were you going to study when you got to Union? Uh, mass communications. You, oh, so you were always that guy? Yes. Okay. All right. So guy, mass communications. Mass major. communications. Um, I wanted to minor in music, but I didn't, which I kind of regret, but 
at the same time, it was a blessing in disguise because I used mass communications to help broaden my horizons exactly. with music because it all connects together in a way. Music and communications is all, you know, one big form to me. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the big thing about going into mass communications? Uh, for me personally, I used it to focus on my weakness because I'm more of a soft spoken person. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> and so I've learned. So, okay. So you use this as an opportunity to really push you right. in an area where you, you were, you know, not as confident as you were in others. So did it work? It actually has, especially, you know, being in mass communications is you can really take just about any course that you want. That's why I love the flexibility of the major. So I can just, you know, take a psychology class here and still go towards my credits or take like a public speaking class and things of that nature and still take a music class. and you know, excel at music, so that was the EBA, but also mm -hmm. just, you know, to broaden my skills and also just to be able to really network and understand the networking game because in music, you have to network as well. Absolutely, absolutely. So I was trying to just bring both worlds together so I can try to be the most complete person that I could be because I want to reach out to everyone. Like, I feel like my mother always told me since I was young, I always had the ability to like, always get along with others regardless of race or gender things of that nature. So I've always kept that in mind. And doing so, it's really, for me, it's been a blessing in disguise. So mom knew what she was talking about. Yeah. There you go. Knew. Shout out to mom. <laughs> shout, out, shout out to mom. Mom knew. There is a value in being able to connect with people across the board. Yeah. There is a true value, whether it's in social, whether it's business. So that's something right there. So you, you finish up at Union, you start looking out there. What is it that you want to do when you finish at Union? Uh, well, my main goal originally was to be in radio. I didn't, well, if I wanted to start off my journey, I went to Union twice. So I started off actually from 2005 because I graduated from Henrico High School in 2005. So I was there to 2007, and then I transferred to Winston-Salem State because they had a better radio program. Mm -hmm. But I didn't finish, I couldn't pay the bills. <laughs> that was the main reason. That's so real. I had to, you know, backtrack. You know, finished paying off the loans there. Then I finished up in Union, um, which was, like I said, a blessing in the sky because then I was able to use the television part of Union and then, you know, learn about behind the scenes and work with the cameras and audio and things of that nature. Because my dad, before he passed away, he always told me just to always be useful to anybody. And, you know, you got some great Mom advice. Both of them nuggets. You got some great advice. You got some wisdom. Yeah, and I figured, like, I mean, why not? You can make any skill into anything that you want it to be. Um, it just all depends on, you know, not listening to the outside noise because people don't know what you're really trying to do, and that's okay. Um, so I'm a little bit rambling now. About life. No, but, no. You're telling your story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so pretty much I, to get back to this, uh, I've been e DJing for eight years. Full time, I've been DJing for the past two years, like, no other job, mm -hmm. straight up just DJing. So wait a that's second, cool. you that, and that's what we talk. So I always say this is a business show. You've made the thing that you wanted to do enough to pay the bills. Enough. Enough. Okay, we ain't talking about getting rich, but yeah. it's a whole bunch of people who don't even have that ability. They don't. They are not doing enough of the thing that they want to do, to, so that they have to go somewhere and do something they may not want to do. Right. But you're doing it well enough. Is paying the bills and building you on to the next thing. So, how can people find your DJ services out there? And what kind of like what kind of events you do you do? Um, in terms of events, everything, and I mean everything. everything. <laughs> like, I don't discriminate on anything because I feel like music is universal, right. and I love all kinds of music. And I'm always willing to give certain genres that I don't listen to a lot a try. Mm -hmm. You never know who can suggest a song, and then before you know it started listening to a certain genre and you started mm -hmm. finding artists that you like and things of that nature. So I just like, why, you know, shut a door on yourself if all the doors are open. Okay. You know? So your, so your focus is very broad. In other words, the service is more of what you are providing than it is being kind of pigeonholed into a particular genre of, right. of music. So what do people get when they sign up to uh, receive you as their DJ? Well, they get someone that's very respectable. Like I really do my best to cater to what you need and also, you know, just add my spin to it at times. 
like for example doing weddings i started doing weddings during covid really <laughs> for real, for real. It, weddings is a huge difference between doing clubs and parties and then doing mm -hmm. a wedding because everybody's stressed out <laughs> you have parents coming to you all the time that don't even know what they're talking about you have to still follow the guideline of the bride and groom you have people that's drunk coming to you like oh i know the bride and groom it's okay you can play this that and the third and you're like well you're not paying me so right don't, right don't let me lose my right. lose my spot so it's a lot to handle mentally mm -hmm. and it takes a certain amount of patience and just at the end of the day um you know just having fun with it that's the main thing to me i have fun with it um i do pay attention to certain playlists that people give me and then i'll sprinkle in some new genres especially like instrumental type music um you know especially during cocktail hour i'll introduce um artists from uh, places like bandcamp.com soundcloud certain producers and a lot of people be interested like you know i never heard of this person mm -hmm. before so that's what i love for people to come up to me and be like oh i haven't heard that's i feel like as a dj the main purpose of that is to introduce new life mm -hmm. because i feel like we get caught up in the same you know three or four genres every single time hear the same 10 songs on the radio every single day right that's and it's, it's become that's repetitive true. nature and this mm -hmm. is all you know but it's so much out here it's a universal language not just a genre it's a language we all speak at some point some type of music as we gravitate toward we listen to a certain song to get us motivated for the day you know to go to sleep at night everything is connected so all right on the mic with mike uh here with uh steve is with us steven's here uh, juliet is with us as well so uh juliet you are a pr expert uh how did how would you recommend that a person who's going out there establish themselves and set their brand up so that they can get additional jobs more jobs what's what's You're the trick specifically to steven him or or anything when when you see a person and their brand what's one thing that stands out to you saying you just shake your head like mm, shouldn't have did that when i look at someone and their brand i think about what is their why and i see if i see that in how they're presenting themselves and, and if I don't, then there's, there's the disconnect. So it's important that when you are presenting yourself that your every presentation can be traced back to your why. And that's what sets you apart. Uh, if you're passionate about, you know, playing music that's gonna help people have a great time and that's what you're really into, then not only will you do that for that event, but you'll always be looking for music that will help people have a great time. So what is it that that's the fire, the passion? Why are you doing this? And then try to make sure that that's traced back to your why. Because as we know, it's your why that gets you up in the morning. That's true. <laughs> it's your why that makes you keep doing it when nobody says you can even be successful or when you absolutely are drained and don't feel like it. Your why gets you up and going. And so that's what I try to look for. It's, it's, it's stay true to your why. Okay, and how can people find you out there? Sure, uh, you can find me on social media. Uh, I am out there under the name of Juliet Davis, or uh, you can find me under True underscore Journey on Instagram. Okay, we got to talk about True underscore Journey. What what's the meaning of that? Well, about hmm, two thousand and six, I wrote my first book entitled Journey of an Overcomer. And the book just basically gives a, a, a recap of a, a phase or a stage in my life where I began to see what it really meant to be an overcomer, how to deal with adversity and continue to move forward. And so in that, I, I really found a connection that was like you, universal, that no matter who you are, you have endured some type of challenge. And the question becomes, how am I going to overcome this challenge? So that's what the true underscore journey true, true. is all about. So, Stephen, when, when you're, I tell people the one big thing for, for kids, especially black guys at, at a school is never leave. Because when you leave, it's hard finding your way back. It's hard because you get into making money. And then the one thing so is you true. need to stay there. You need to continue being broke. Because the second you start realizing how bad broke is, then you have to go back to it again. You're like, man, it's so, so what, let's talk about your journey back. Okay. So you, first of all, not only do you leave, but you say you got to leave and pay back the loans. And that stuff, was key. Right? Because, okay, now you're back in your square. 
Now you got to go back again. Let's talk about the journey and what that meant. Uh, now, you know what somebody start off with? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> we getting ready to get the, It's the good part now. But this is the real, though. I'm yeah. convinced because so many people just throw their hands up and quit. And then they run from, you know, the student loan people <laughs> who want right. their money. And I think that the, the, the courage and, and the, the fortitude, the drive that you exhibited to not only, you know, make up your mind that you're going back, but like Mike said, get square with where you were and then move forward. I mean, I think that is highly commendable. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so tell it us was, about that. It was tough in the beginning because during that time, um, like I was still doing producing at the time. Like I've been dealing with instruments and everything since I was like fourth grade. Mm -hmm. Started out playing trumpet and moved over to baritone in high school and then was producing from 16 all the way up to I was like 28, 29. And then, you know, transitioning it from that to DJing. So it's like, I'm as well put together as can be. Uh, so <laughs> it was tough because that, when you start working, like just, you know, working a job and you kind of get stuck in the daily habits of a nine to five schedule, mm -hmm. slowly start forgetting about what you, your attentions was when getting the job. Mm -hmm. And it started to happen to me and I finally caught myself and like, whoa, wait a minute. This isn't the, this isn't the path. <laughs> you go this down the path. Really comfortable. Right, yeah. right. Comfortable. That's it's huge. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to get too comfortable with something that you don't want to do precisely. But understand that you need this foundation in order to get to what you truly want to do. Mm -hmm. And yes. that's what I had to just understand for myself. Like, okay, I'm chipping away, I'm chipping away. Seem like it's years are going by, but I know I'm gonna get back to school. Mm -hmm. So when I finally saw like okay I'm, i am chipping away mm -hmm. oh i need to make this happen now and it just kind of clicked over shoot yeah the summertime i'm like you know what i'm getting my butt back to school now and i'm gonna knock this out and, it, awesome. and that mindset came about and then everything really just happened one step at a time and like for anybody that's like you know have to take a break it's okay you know again it's just not worried about the outside noise and understand that like when I listen to people more, we always, I feel like we always, always, we always have a plan. We always talk about, okay, this is what I need to do X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, but then we just don't follow through with it for whatever right. reason. We always lay down a foundation, but yet we don't keep the foundation and go about it. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, this is what I'm going to do X, Y, Z and X, Y, Z came about quickly, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? And I'm a big believer in faith, big believer in God, so I, you know, pray about it. And I was able to get back to Union. And then two years later, I was able to graduate. Finish. Here you go, Union Finest. One of the things I always say about HBCUs, they care, everybody on campus know who's going to class. Right. And everybody on campus care. I'm talking about the, the ladies in the cafeteria, the grounds people. <laughs> everybody do. know, and it's a value in that. My my nephew went to Penn State and had some problems. Mom passed away. The money wasn't right. They didn't care. They're like, yo, you know, when your money get right, you can come on back and join the family. Mm -hmm. I remember sitting in the bursar's office up at Lincoln with my son, like, Lord, I got to tell this man a lot. I just got to figure out something. I'm finally like, yo, Mr. Jenkins, I ain't got it. I need a payment plan and I need one with no down payment. Right. Right. And so you know that's the value of an HBCU. All right, so the DJ services. How can people find your DJ services out there? Okay, you can find me on Instagram. It's DJ UK. That's how I pronounce do the, the, the real abbreviation is the British abbreviation. Oh, you were one of he's yeah, one I'm, of them. He's one of them. I, I, I try to I really try to look up what I try. But Duke is really came from a nickname my grandmother gave me. She's still living today. So I choose the power of that to carry on with me. Uh -huh. So it's DJ UK underscore peace. I am a peace worker mm -hmm. at <laughs> Instagram. And that's my major platform. Or you can find me at SoundCloud, www.soundcloud.com backslash baby monster, uh, B A B I monster uh, dash one. Because I was. <laughs> Let's talk about the baby monster one. <laughs> where did that? Yeah, yeah. Where uh, did that yeah. Come baby from? monster creations came about uh, a decade ago. I was talking with a friend on the phone, and she was complimenting me on my producing skills. 
And she was like, you know, you, you know, you're nice at this, you know, you're a monster. I'm like, no, I'm not a monster. I'm just getting started, you know. She was like, oh, okay, well, then you're a baby monster. Then. And it mm-hmm. stuck. And it just stuck. I mean, <laughs> that's and I nice. Like, that's nice. I feel like with, with a baby, it's like it's infinite. Mm-hmm. You know, you never you know, the possibilities are endless right. with the baby right. in terms of that. So I, you know, kept that. All right, on the mic with Mike, ESPN Rich on 106.1 and the choice on the 5.3. That's where you find us. We are the premier business radio program around. I'd like to thank Stephen for coming on the program with us. Julia Davis is going to hang out with us. We're going to talk to Rufus Johnson, recording artist, uh, gospel singer extraordinaire. His work is all around. The man's on the road. He also does a lot with uh, on the educational side that we're going to talk about. So on the mic with Mike, we'll be back on the other side. Thanks now. <laughs>